What is the difference between oppositional defiant disorder and pathological demand avoidance? Great question. I'm going to explain it to you. First, oppositional defiant disorder is not a great category because it doesn't explain the deep why or root cause beyond the surface level behavior behaviors of vindictiveness, opposition, defiance, um, or being deliberately annoying. And this is not explanatory as a category of like, why? Why would a child be like that? And I think ODD is often capturing an underlying neurodivergence and or trauma. Every single one of these eight descriptors can be easily explained looking through the root cause of pathological demand avoidance and a fight flight response of your child's nervous system. Okay, so first a pattern of angry, irritable, mood, argumentative, defiant behavior or vindictiveness lasting, lasting six months or as evidenced by at least four symptoms of the following categories. Okay, often loses temper can be a fight response, right? From perceiving losses of autonomy and equality in the moment or over time, they have a fight response. So it looks like a meltdown or a temper tantrum. Often touchy or easily annoyed, they might say things like stop talking or growl or don't sit here or controlling behavior. That's actually not annoyance. That's an expression of the body trying to get back to a place of nervous system safety from stress inside the nervous system, and it's called equalizing behavior. Is often angry or resentful. Is it emotions like anger and resentment, or is it actually a fight response that's coming out because of the perception of a lack of safety? Okay, often argues with an authority figure or for children with adults. Okay, this is very common for PDA kids and teens, and this is because they are equalizing, which means arguing with you potentially about things that don't seem to matter, like what color is the house across the street? Is it blue or is it red? It might look blue to you, but they're saying, no, it's red. Or, you know, I went to this friend's house instead of this friend's house, and they're arguing with something that you both know is not true. This is a form of equalizing that is common in pathological demand avoidance, but it's characterized here as arguing, right? Okay, actively defies or refuses to comply with requests. So this is an interesting one because if you're a parent, you might notice that actually it's not so active as it's described in oppositional defiant disorder. Like they might be distracting you. You're trying to have a conversation and they are speaking over you or changing the subject or starting to say, mama, mama, mama. Or they're more of a flight response. They're climbing on the back of a couch. They're climbing and the window sills are on top of a car, which is defiant in a sense, but it's not the aggression indicated here in oppositional defiant disorder. Or they might have a freeze response where they stop talking or start crying or sort of like go lethargic or disassociative, okay? Often deliberately annoys others. This is when, you know, you're trying to do the dishes and they are demanding undivided attention, like, or you're trying to talk to your partner or trying to text and they're saying mama or they're speaking over you or they're starting to equalize or bother a sibling like destroying their stuff this is all part of pathological demand avoidance and what i don't like here is the deliberately because if we're talking about de pathological demand avoidance it's a nervous system reaction which is reflexive sometimes subconscious and automatic okay and then vindictiveness i don't even know what that means in terms of like how do you measure whether or not it's vindictive? But this is part and parcel to what we see in equalizing. Like if a PDA kid goes over to their sibling and the sibling says, no, don't touch my stuff. They fixate on touching the stuff or destroying what's right in front of them of the siblings, which looks like vindictiveness. Okay, so those are all the things that do look the same, oppositional defiant disorder and pathological demand avoidance. But if you're a parent, and you have these behavioral indicators, what you want to tune into is the things that aren't explained by ODD. For example, is your child having trouble accessing basic needs? Are they having trouble eating independently? Did they start using a diaper or pooping in the bathtub? Do they need to co-sleep with you? Have they moved into a non-24-hour sleep cycle? 
are they saying their legs don't work? Okay, so we're starting to see ac access to basic needs being impacted by the root cause, which is not explained by ODD, of nervous system activation. Okay, second, your child may have sensory differences, right? Like my son needs the lights off in the living room. How would that be described? How would that be included or explained in oppositional defiant disorder? Or he gags when I unpeel a banana in the room over. It's an olfactory response. So think about whether or not there are also sensory things going on, also basic needs impacted. Third, social communication differences, which can be hard to note when your child is always activated. Um, and then fourth, the need for constant undivided attention, which also isn't explained in ODD, but may be categorized in like an anxiety or an attachment disorder, like under the guise of can't be separated from you. But what's actually happening is they have nervous system dysregulation all the time from constantly perceiving sa lack of safety because of losses of autonomy and equality, which is just pervasive in their entire life, the way modern life is structured. And so of course they're gonna wanna be with a safe nervous system all the time. So those are the four things that are not explained in oppositional defiant disorder. So if you're a parent and your child has been diagnosed with these, you may want to explore pathological demand avoidance, which has a root cause that has the same indicators of these, but it actually has a deep why that makes sense. Hope that's helpful.